largest drought in recent history, the company's applying for special powers to cut off consumers for 24 hours at a time. And according to the water regulator Offwatt, it's not just Yorkshire where customers are being shortchanged. In a letter leaked to the Times, Offwatt's Director General says Yorkshire Water, North West Water and South West Water are all failing to provide a satisfactory service. Water bills have surged since privatisation. In Yorkshire, up from 111 to 207 pounds. The North West from 123 to 195 pounds and the southwest from 146 to 317 pounds. But leakages have surged too. Last year, Yorkshire lost 35% of its supply, up from 29% three years ago. The northwest lost 38%, up from 13%, and the southwest lost 31%, up from 20%. Offwatt wants to know why pollution treatment work on some beaches has been delayed despite an increase in consumer charges and it's alleged that sewage could have contaminated the drinking water in 700,000 homes in the northwest. We want to make absolutely certain that the customer is getting the service which they're paying for, which they're entitled to, and which was agreed to through, I say, the price mechanism. But the water companies are arguing that it's the lack of rain which is causing them all the problems. This reservoir is normally completely full at this time of year. Some areas are experiencing their worst drought since the 17th century. But one of the companies singled out by Offwatt says it will be able to answer any criticisms. We will be giving a detailed response over the next few weeks and we believe that will show that we've done all that was asked of us. All three water companies have said they'll be cooperating fully with the inquiry, which is expected to publish its findings early in the new year. Ben McCarthy, News at 10, West Yorkshire. Next on News at 10... <laughs> The lottery's birthday surprise that even startled Anthea Turner. The most unusual pet. Do not adjust your set. And the two boys who've lived their lives with the wrong mothers. You look into those little blue eyes and you think, oh, he's not mine. I think it's probably changed our whole lives and it will forever. <laughs> If you buy your mobile phone from People's Phone, you can take advantage of their unique call quota service. <coughs> Which means your call charges can never go above an agreed limit. So, even if your phone is stolen, cloned, or worse still, borrowed by your teenage daughter, you'll never, unlike me, run up a huge phone bill. Run up a huge phone bill. Unbelievable. People's Phone, where talk is cheaper. For a free information pack, call 0345 10 11 12. When I finish shopping, you know, the first thing I do before I even unpack, I have a magnum. Well, why not? I always have my magnums tucked away in the freezer. When the phone rings, I let it ring. It's my moment. I have this nightmare. I go to the freezer for a magnum and they're all gone. Unique, with an inner fire. There's something irresistible about natural beauty. And there's no mistaking a brilliance that lasts forever. Amigos, estamos perdidos. Não esquenta. Eu peço o mapa pelo correio eletrônico. Aqui? Eu estou rodando o S2 Warp Connect da IBM. Ele me dá acesso remoto ao servidor da minha rede. Ao meu work group, até a internet. Será que a internet tem uma lista de aranhas venenosas, daquelas bem peludas, grandes, com a cabeça? Believe me, it's not easy looking natural on film. I'm Alan Weisinger. As a movie makeup artist, the biggest challenge is to get a beautiful natural look, especially in close-up. The new Naturals range from Max Factor has soft, fresh colors, inspired by nature. Light, gentle formulas that feel natural on the skin. You give me Max Factor Naturals, I'll give you a beautiful look, naturally. New Max Factor Naturals. The makeup of makeup artists. Max Factor International. You're the new veterinary? Yes. You'll be off to see Mrs. Drummond then. Well, yes. Oh, be easy. 
Here you are, sir. Thanks. Off to see Mrs. Drummond, are you? Yes. Oh, uh -huh. easy. You want me to be your housekeeper? Uh, my predecessor recommended you very highly. Your predecessor was a miser. He was a skinflint. He was a penny pinching Scrooge. He was too mean even to buy decent coffee. And I'm not sure I want to go through all that again. No taste like this cafe, is there? The National Lottery is now one year old, but the passing of time hasn't stopped the arguments about its impact on Britain's social fabric. Senior churchmen and gambling watchdogs continued to condemn it today, while the government and the lottery organisers said it had been an unqualified success. Ian Glover-James reports. One year old today and the glamour of the lottery is proving irresistible. Two in three Britons now gamble regularly. They spend £65 million pounds a week on tickets. Camelot, the lottery organisers, think that's enough for a second midweek draw. The biggest winner is still Mark Gardner, a double glazing contractor from Hastings, who shared £22 million, then was pilloried by relatives and ex-wives for a headline-grabbing lifestyle. No comment. And more controversy, Lee Ryan, richer by £6 million, but later jailed for receiving stolen cars. Instant scratch cards boosted lottery takings to new levels, but Camelot now admits some parts of Britain produce more winners than others, and they can't explain why. Wales and the West has 33% fewer winners than the national average. The North East has 16% fewer and Scotland 14% fewer. But the South West has 13% more winners than the national average and Yorkshire has 18% more. But the National Lottery has its critics, notably the Church. What is the point of school teachers and parents telling children to study and get a job and work hard at it if the children come to feel through perpetual propaganda that if they have a bit of luck they can have a life of ease and luxury based on no effort, no skill, just a number coming up. Camelot is unrepentant. It's been an extraordinary and exciting um, year. It has, but today's birthday was marred by a one in 14 million chance mishap. The icing on the cake was as fragile as one's chance of winning the National Lottery jackpot. Young Glover James, News at 10 in central London. Virgin Television announced tonight it's to launch a legal challenge over the award of the licence for the new Channel 5 network. Last month, the Independent Television Commission gave the franchise to Channel 5 Broadcasting. Tonight, Virgin said it will seek a judicial review of the decision following legal advice. The acting Israeli Prime Minister Shimon Peres today used words and deeds to reinforce his commitment to the Middle East peace process. He brought forward the handover to Palestinian control of the West Bank town of Jenin. And in his first speech to Parliament since the murder of Yitzhak Rabin, he said he would continue to seek peace with both Syria and Lebanon. From Israel, Caroline Kerr reports. <laughs> For the 40,000 residents of this West Bank town, it's been a day of celebration. After 28 years of Israeli occupation and decades of conflict, the town of Janin is under Palestinian control. At dawn this morning, the last Israeli jeeps pulled out. It was the agreement to hand over land to the Palestinians which cost Yitzhak Rabin his life. As local people poured into the old Israeli barracks and Arab policemen drove into town, the Prime Minister's legacy was being fulfilled in spite of his death. By mid-morning, hundreds of Palestinian policemen had marched into Jenin as a symbol of the new order. Most of the new officers are former PLO members from across the Arab world. Old enemies of Israel, now partners in the peace process. The fact that this handover has taken place earlier than many people expected is a sign that the assassination of Yitzhak Rabin has done nothing to slow down the peace process. Indeed, the signs are it may even have speeded it up. In a town where more than 170 Palestinians died in clashes with Israeli soldiers, children now gather around their own troops for autographs. But though the Palestinians may be achieving some autonomy, there can be no guarantee of peace here until the extremists on both sides are reined in. Caroline Kerr, News at 10, Janine. 
The actor Sir Robert Stevens has died aged 64. Sir Robert, who was widely acclaimed as one of the great Shakespearean actors, was knighted in the New Year's Honours. He underwent a liver and kidney transplant last year. The independent newspaper announced tonight that its editor, Ian Hargreaves, has resigned. Mr Hargreaves, who became editor just over a year ago, is being replaced temporarily by the former editor of The Times, Charles Wilson. And stars from show business were among the many mourners to attend the funeral of the comedian Marty Kane. Around 3,000 people gathered outside Sheffield Cathedral to listen to the service. The former England soccer manager Graham Taylor today resigned as boss of Wolverhampton Wanderers. His team has slumped to 18th in the first division, a position unacceptable for an ambitious club with a big following, a modern stadium and a wealthy backer. Peter Staunton reports. It was an all-too-familiar scene, a frustrated Graham Taylor seeing his job prospects destroyed by the throw of a dice. Had this last-minute chance gone in for Wolves, the manager might have hung on, but a dull draw brought more invective from the fans. He just hasn't got a clue what he's doing. He's got to go before we go down. And so, before being sacked, Taylor resigned, leaving Molyneux a bitter man. Obviously, the team has not been playing well, but only 13 weeks into the season, we are still in all competitions. Our recent run of only two defeats in 12 games is not as bad as our sterner critics claim. It's a second humiliating failure for the man who once worked miracles, taking Watford to second spot in the league and a Wembley final. The magic continued at Villa Park, but then ran out dramatically when he took on the England job. At the end of a dismal European campaign, he committed the cardinal sin of substituting Gary Lineker. The striker who'd played his last game for his country never forgave him. And when Holland destroyed England's World Cup hopes, Taylor was looking for a job back in league football, branded a turnip on the tabloid back pages. I do not intend to make any further comment. And as he heads for an uncertain future, that may well be the best policy. The England and Rangers player Paul Gascoigne is to face a police investigation into incidents during his club's match with Aberdeen on Saturday. The Procurator Fiscal has asked for police reports before deciding whether any charges should be brought. Imagine being told that the child you have raised as your own is not your own. That's the terrible truth two women have to live with for the rest of their lives. Six years ago they gave birth to boys on the same day in the same hospital in South Africa. Each was sent home with the other's child. They've just won compensation, but for the mothers and the boys who know about the mistake, money can never repair the emotional damage they've suffered. Our Africa correspondent Mark Austin has our special report. Two mothers and two sons brought together by extraordinary circumstances. A nightmare story that began when Meg Clinton Parker underwent paternity suit blood tests and found that not only was the father not the father of Gavin, but there was no possibility that she was the mother. Her own son, Robin, was actually with an unknowing Sandra Dawkins. Their babies swapped accidentally by nurses at this hospital minutes after birth. A mistake not discovered until the children were two years old. Every time I looked at him, I sat and sobbed my eyes out for hours on end because he's a victim of, of circumstance. He, it's something that happened that nobody asked for. I think it's probably changed our whole lives and it will forever. Mm. Both have two children, one can't live with us, and we struggle with that. So obviously you're, it's been an emotional battle. I mean, it's been, it's been five years now, and it's been five years of hell, I think. The boys, who are now six years old, understand little about what's happened. The mothers bring them together as often as they can, but it leads to a welter of emotions and insecurities. One of the biggest things we faced was, was meeting our own children. We're always thinking, well, what is my own child doing? Is he all right? Is she looking after him properly? As much as you say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to give him away, you don't know how you're going to react to your natural child. And uh, I think we both reacted very strongly because they are so much like their natural families. Um, they are distinctly, there's no mistaking that they're who's, who's the natural parents. But both say there's no question of giving up the child they've bonded with. You look into those little blue eyes and you think, oh, he's not mine. But he is mine because I fought with him from the very minute he was given to me. I fought with him through all his problems. I'm still fighting with him, so he's mine. That's that. I've always said I've wanted them both, but I'm, you know, I mean, I'm not about to walk in and steal. 
psychologists say they face a lifetime of mental trauma. This is ongoing, forever. You know, as long as the children live and as long as the woman lives, there's going to be problems. In the court case just concluded, the mothers were each awarded £30,000 damages. But apart from the psychological problems, it's also a legal minefield. At any one time, either one of the mothers can demand the return of her natural child and there'd be very little that the other mother could do to frustrate a claim like that. Um, if either mother were to die without making a will, the natural child would have a claim against the state in preference to the child that's been raised as her own. What we're trying to achieve is that they get the same opportunities and try and provide the same sort of home. But they say they'll never get over the anger. No matter what religion or creed, colour, your universal right is your child, and they took that away from us. Mark Austin, News at 10, South Africa. Tonight's headlines again. The father of a student who's seriously ill after taking ecstasy has appealed to parents everywhere to guard against drugs. And President Clinton says America will do all it can to help track down the bombers who attacked a US army base in Saudi Arabia. And finally, don't worry, your television set isn't on the blink. What's thought to be the world's first green cat has been born in Denmark. It's green from the tip of its tail to its whiskers. It's nine weeks old and both its parents are conventionally coloured. Local vets have been consulted, but they can't explain it. And for those of you watching in black and white, you'll just have to take it on trust. That's News at 10. Good night. Good evening. Well, our main concern tonight is fog, quite widespread fog, and certainly getting thicker as the night wears on, especially so around the Glasgow as well as the Manchester area. There are a couple of exceptions. Later on tonight, we're expecting some rain in West Devon as well as Cornwall, and then in the very far northeast of Scotland, the clouds thick enough for that. Now, as we go into tomorrow morning, there we see the rain at the two opposite ends of the country. Otherwise, a dull and murky start to the day, the fog lingering in places, and in fact, it remains misty in the north of England and Northern Ireland, with just a few glimpses of the sun. Now, later on, we've got some rain arriving on the scene, some fairly hefty bursts from time to time, and towards evening, cold enough in the very far north of Scotland for those showers to turn wintry. Now, that's because the wind's switching direction to come from the north, so as you'd expect, we've got the temperatures there looking much poorer than they did today but mild once again in the south we're expecting a high of 12 or if you prefer that in Fahrenheit that's 54 with only light winds but later on in the week towards the weekend getting cold everywhere that's all from me good night sponsored by power Gen, producing electricity whatever the weather tomorrow on GMTV at 7.20, the divine Beth Midler invites Eamon Holmes into her parlor. Yeah, man. And Emmerdale's Kim Tate I wanna talk. tells how far she's prepared to go to get her man tomorrow. She's a peach. The VTech Master Video Painter is like an electronic canvas. It encourages a child's creative imagination to be expressed on the screen. That's my dad. They can draw freely, spray or paint with all the colours of the rainbow, compose music with the touch of a master, animation to bring their drawings to life. The VTech Master Video Painter turns little Lenny's into Leonardo's. Look into VTech, much more than meets the eye. <coughs> Um, I am here to tell anyone who receives a tax return form about the launch of self-assessment. Will you have anything to fear? We think not. I think you will agree change can sometimes be for the better. The tax system will be leaner, simpler and more efficient. And it won't tax your brain. So, to prevent a nasty shock, find out how self-assessment will affect you.
For more information, ring 0345 16 15 14 anytime. The new Almira will take it for a test drive. Of course. Alone. Great fun to drive. Mm. Comfortable too. Multi-link beam suspension. <laughs> <laughs> car they don't want you to drive. Super Trinitron wide. Be careful what you watch. Andrex Ultra challenges Europe in Germany. Quick to absorb, Andrex Ultra is better than conventional kitchen roll. It's strong even when wet. Echt strong. Nothing absorbs quicker and better than Andrex Ultra. How's a dog supposed to get any kit round here? New Andrex is even softer, so it's now squeezably soft. Go on, go on. Yeah, got it. Peace at last. New Andrex so soft, it's squeezably soft. Tonight in New Voices. 1993. My mum and dad split up. Oh. Do you know she keeps sending kids across to ask Danny where his father is? Oh, don't be so silly. Here it is, your present. Where? What? Number 16. Does your wife know about this place? You <gasps> whore! <laughs> Tension for a mixed race relationship in Little India. Part of the New Voices season tonight, 1040 on Yorkshire. Before then, the headlines from the region with Helen Wright. Good evening from Calendar. A father who kidnapped his daughter and fled to America has today been jailed for 18 months. Her grandmother was given a suspended sentence for her part in the abduction. Emma Hallam's mother, Michelle, spent three years searching for her daughter. Emma, who's eight, is now back in Leeds living with her mother. Martin Hallam and his mother Bettina Dawn returned to Yorkshire in July to face charges of abduction. It marked the end of a three-year life on the run, not only for them, but also his young daughter Emma. She and her mother Michelle, who'd waged a long campaign to get her daughter back, had an emotional reunion. Today at Leeds Crown Court, Martin Hallam pleaded guilty to abduction and was jailed for 18 months. His mother, Bettina Dawn from Seacroft in Leeds, was sentenced to six months, suspended for two years. The judge told Martin Hallam and his mother that theirs had been a well-thought-out plan, but effectively they'd lived as fugitives and that was no way to bring up a small child. He added that although he recognised Emma had been looked after well, Michelle had been deprived of her daughter's company for three and a quarter years. Michelle Hallam has avoided publicity since her daughter's homecoming in the hope that their lives could return to normal, but it's been a painful ordeal for both parents. He's facing an 18-month prison sentence, but uh, his main concern, as it has been throughout these proceedings, is with his daughter. And as I say, he loves and misses her very much. She never wanted Emma to be taken abroad. She never wanted her husband to, to, to go to prison. But unfortunately, matters were taken out of her hands by Martin Hallam, he took the law into his own, own hands and he is the one that has to bear the consequences today. 
Michelle Hallam can now put her ordeal firmly behind her, but with the number of child abductions up by more than a quarter this year, legal experts have welcomed the sentence, saying it sends a clear message to all estranged parents. Yorkshire Water has today been condemned for not doing enough to stave off the water crisis. The criticism comes in a leaked letter to the company's chief executive Trevor Newton from the water watchdog Offwat. The revelation was made on the eve of a public inquiry where Yorkshire Water will seek permission for rotor cuts in Kirklees and Calderdale. Those cuts though have now been put off until the end of November. The inquiry, which will bring rotor cuts one step closer, begins here at Dewsbury Town Hall in the morning. The hall will be packed with objectors. Tonight in the town are feeling that Yorkshire Water could do better. Could have sorted out a bit sooner, really, couldn't I? You know, it's been threatening for three or four years. I don't want my water cut off for Christmas. <laughs> Sentiments echoed today in comments leaked from a letter from Offwatt's national chairman to Yorkshire Water's chief executive Trevor Newton. He was told the plight of customers during the current drought raises serious questions about decisions taken by the company in the years leading up to this summer, as well as the action or inaction in response to warning signs. Yorkshire Water have a bad history uh, of uh, a lot of drought orders and a lot of host by bans stretching back over 20 years. Uh, also, they haven't met some standards uh, in, in terms of leakage undertakings that they gave in, 19, in 1989. Meanwhile, the water tankers continue to roll day and night, and Yorkshire Water continue to insist the crisis isn't caused by underinvestment. The crisis that we're now in, and it's now in its seventh or eighth month, is basically caused by an extreme lack of rainfall, the sort of thing that might come around every thousand years. I don't think any company could be expected to prepare for that. Some good news today, though, for consumers at least. The weekend rain up to an inch in places has led to a small rise in reservoir levels that only postponed rotor cuts until next month. An off-duty policeman is being praised for his bravery after tackling a gunman who held customers hostage in a pub on Humberside. An intruder entered the Haven pub at Hedden late last night and blocked the only exit from the bar with a chair. He held 16 customers and staff at gunpoint for over two hours. He was then overpowered by an off-duty policeman who managed to disarm the man with the help of a member of staff. The officer is now being considered for a bravery award. A man is being questioned in connection with the incident. It's been revealed that three police officers with the West Yorkshire Force have been suspended from duty following an allegation that a prisoner was assaulted. The inspector, a sergeant and a constable are all understood to work at the divisional headquarters in Wakefield. It's alleged a prisoner received an injury to the face. An investigation is now underway. Finally, the people of Sheffield turned out in force today to pay their last respects to comedian Marty Kane. Family and friends of the star were joined by top entertainers for the service at Sheffield Cathedral, which included Marty's own thoughts on life and death. She battled against cancer for seven years. It was Marty's wish that she'd be remembered without tears. She was the northern lass, and that was all you can say, really. She was just a lot of fun, big friend. I really felt as though she was a friend. She certainly made us happy. She was great to be around, and uh, that's why we're here today, just, you know, to... You know, to pay thanks for having Marty for the, the time we did. I wish she's in good hands now, anyway. That's it from me. There'll be more news from Calendar at quarter past six tomorrow. <laughs>Cloudy skies with misty conditions are expected across our region tonight and the cloud will tend to lower to give extensive hill fog on higher parts of the region, especially the Peak District and the Pennines. Almost anywhere could see a little drizzle, but heavier and more persistent rain currently in the southwest of the region will slowly spread north during the night to affect many parts by morning. Much of north and east Yorkshire, however, will remain dry. Due to all the cloud, it won't be a cold night. Lowest temperatures around 7 Celsius, 45 Fahrenheit. Patchy outbreaks of rain will affect many parts of North and East Yorkshire in the morning, while areas to the southwest will still be rather cloudy and damp, but brighter than yesterday. A little sunshine is possible in the afternoon, but further cloud and rain will move into the extreme south of the region after dark. Temperatures will be similar to today's, with highs of 12 Celsius, 54 Fahrenheit and little or no wind. That's the forecast. Tomorrow's summary looking like this. Early rain in places, but brighter later.
I, I would really like to know you a whole lot better. So call me Lou. So Lou, call me. Cher is a maternal mermaid. Wednesday at nine. I think you might be old enough for a boyfriend now. If I'm old enough, maybe you're too old. Rob Lowe's got the Oxford Blues. She's more beautiful than I thought. And the race is on for the girl of his dreams. Why don't you come along? If you're not doing anything. And I hope you're not doing anything. Your movie double bill for Wednesday on Yorkshire. Now in our New Voices drama series, a tale from the Northeast of relationships between races. <laughs>